Uh, let's see, can you mix different DI styles to support legacy bean definitions? Absolutely. So let, by legacy bean definitions, let's say that, that means in XML. By the way, XML is not treated as legacy from our point of view. It's still very first class and it always will be. Um, but for you, from your point of view, maybe it's legacy. Maybe you're wanting to move away from XML. So can you mix different DI styles? Definitely, right? When you start annotation-based config, when you do component scanning, you actually kick that off from XML anyway, right? Context component scanning, which we didn't get to see in the demo. But it is in the code if you check it out. So right there, you already ha you're already mixing some XML with annotation. From a configuration class point of view, you can do this too. Right? You can have the configuration class, there's an annotation called import resource. So maybe you want to bootstrap everything from Java, but where you need those legacy bean definitions, you just want to import them in. Right? So at import resource, and then you give the you know, path to your XML on the class path, and all of those bean definitions merge together just like they all came from XML or just like they all came from Java. So regardless of where you start, if you start from Java or you start from XML, if you're using the annotations in your Pojos or you're not, you can mix and match the different styles um, each way you can imagine. And um, it's 8.12. We still have 230 people on the call. Um, I've got time. So I'm, I'm just going to stick around. We'll go at least another 10 minutes if people are still eager to hear. Um, we'll see about it from there. Can you still override beans configured with one style with another? I know we sometimes override auto-wired uh, beans or add component beans with Spring XML, and I thought that feature was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you can. So, for example, just like you said, if, you, if you've got something that you component scanned, you can still override that definition in XML. Or maybe you've got a definition in XML that you import into a configuration class, and you put a bean method there to override the bean definition in XML. That works as well. Um, there are some possibilities where you might not be able to do exactly what you want to do. If you run into that, put an issue in. It's just those very kinds of things that we want to flesh out and spin through them. But for the most part, you can override however you want. Why is Java spec, uh, why is JSR 330's default scope prototype instead of singleton? Is there any specific reason? Um, this is just something good to point out um, when you're when you're thinking about moving from spring annotations to JSR 330 annotations. And this may be something I should have mentioned earlier as well. That from JSR 330's point of view, all all beans configured or all objects created in dependency injected have prototype scoping, what we would call prototype scoping, instead of singleton. Why is that? It's something that. Um, frankly, we weren't very happy with um, because in our experience, the, the default that Spring has is actually the default that people want. Why? Because if you have something like a bean like a data source, you probably want to share the same data source as a singleton across many different objects that depend on it. Maybe you have 10 DAOs. They all want the same data source right? by default. Um, likewise, if you have something like a transfer service, you probably only ever need one of those. It's probably stateless, right? It can probably be a singleton. Um, so why is JSR 330 prototype? I actually looked into this myself. I might have missed it on the mailing list. I'm not exactly sure what the technical rationale is, but, um, but I do know that this is also the default in Juice, right? And of course, uh, Google, makers of Juice, and Spring Source played a role in the, in the JSR spec team. We, we co-led that, that spec. So of course, you know, there's a cross-pollination of ideas. That one made it in. Um, you can definitely feed back to the JSR group, although it probably won't change now that, now that 1.0 of that spec is out. But it is something to be aware of. OK. Um, does the Spring 3.0 application context that we saw in the demo, the um, annotation config application context, does it respect JSR 330 annotations described in the demo? Yes, it does. Um, one feature that we didn't see in this talk is that annotation config application context can not only accept configuration classes as constructor art parameters, it can also take plain old uh, components. So if we wanted to, we didn't even have to create a configuration class 
for that demo. We could have just taken transfer service, the, the implementation of it. We could have taken default transfer service. We could have taken simple account repository. And we could have taken uh, you know, zero fee policy and just thrown all of those classes into annotation config application context as long as they have annotations on them like inject or auto wired they'll just all auto wire up no need for any xml no need even for a configuration class and that's one of the reasons that we call that context annotation config application context because it's not just about configuration classes uh, do we encourage the use of configuration classes yes <laughs> Yes, um, basically yes, but um, but uh, it's obviously really important to know about all the different styles. Don't just use it because it's there. Do you have a compelling reason for it? Maybe you'd like to use object orientation in your configuration. Maybe you really, really care about type safety. Maybe you have strange objects that are kind of hard to configure in XML that are easier in plain Java. And then um, I can say this, once Spent 3.1 is out and we've really mapped those key parts of the XML namespaces into code, Right? Configuration classes already work great, but they'll really be a complete first class citizen. You'll really be able to do just about anything you could possibly need or imagine inside of a configuration class. Today, the reality is if you have a, a typical application, you're going to need to do something like transaction management, and so you're going to have to have at least that snippet of XML. Right? And it's a bit ironic that to enable annotation-driven transaction management, you have to create an XML file. We are aware of that irony. <laughs> right, once that's worked out, configuration classes can be the beginning and the end of your configuration experience. So getting to know them now, using them for what they're good for now, will just make that process that much easier as the Spring 3.1 milestones come out and you can feed back to us about you know, how that experience goes because you'll know configuration classes. Okay, interesting. I attended one of the Spring 2.0 conferences, or maybe that was Spring 2.5 conferences hosted by Rod Johnson, so this was maybe Spring 1 or something like that, where he passionately defended and supported XML config over annotations in the Java code. What led to this radical change where now the push is toward code-based annotations? Great question. So, so let's just take the question apart a little bit. So back in Spring 2.0, this was prior to us having this kind of support, right? So you might say uh, it's a defensive position or something like that. I think where we were coming from at that time was that was that Spring is really about non-invasiveness and putting annotations into code is by definition invasive. But basically what happened is we learned along with the community learning and we listened to what the community wanted, right? We saw the community looking at things like Juice, feeding back to us saying, hey, this is a great idea and it works, right? So the point is, our, we'll change our minds over time based on the evidence. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just because one thing we say doesn't mean that, that will always and forever be true, right? I think one of the things that we pride ourselves on is listening to the community. And when the community says, hey, you know, these annotations are a great thing, great, we'll support that too. But speaking for Rod, I hope he doesn't mind, he'll still passionately defend XML config. Why? Because it works very, very well, right? Spring is as popular as it is for a reason. And for a long, long time, the only thing that people were using was XML config. So it's a first-class option to use annotations now. It's a nearly first-class option to use configuration classes. That will be rounded out in 3.1 completely. Those are all first-class options, right? So when we talk about there being a push for code-based annotations, not really, not really, right? continue to use XML for as long as it serves you, for as long as you want, which might be you know, until the last day of spring. Right? So it's not going anywhere. It's not going to be deprecated. Nothing like that. Just making all the options people want available. All right. I think you know, we didn't get through every single last question, but, um, but most of them. And I really, really appreciate you guys hanging around. We still have 180 people here. Uh, so thanks for sticking it out. Um, really, really appreciate everybody's participation. Thanks.